Tony Delizzi. Dieter Lizzi. Dieter Lizzi. Tony D's fine. Uh, author and illustrator of the Spiderwick Chronicles. Quickly, what's it about? Fairies. Fairies. <laughs> you see, the magical world of fairies. If you've got any questions, nick.co.uk. We'll be back in a little bit. Now tell me, have you met any fairies? Back with Tony and Holly. Spiderwick Chronicles, how did it come about? Well, we got a letter uh, from Jared Simon and Mallory Grace, which are the Spiderwick kids. Yep. And they said that they had had experiences with fairies, and they were hoping that we would believe them and that we would put their story in a book. And so we went down to their house in Maine, and they showed us uh, some of the, th so the guide itself and yeah. some of the other things that they had. And uh, we believed them so put their story in the book. These kids, yeah. and right. they met some fairies. According to them, that's For right. real now? Yeah. No yeah. joke to me now. No, yes. no, that's what they said. And, we, and the stuff they showed us was pretty realistic, so... You I heard it, it here on Nickelodeon. We'll be back with Tony and Holly in a little bit. Stay tuned. <laughs> oh, you're watching Nick later, and we're here with the author and illustrator of The Spiderwick Chronicles. Now, Holly, can you give us a bit of a grounding about the story for some people who don't know what's going down? Well... Jared, Simon, and Mallory move into their mad old aunt's house, okay. their great aunt's house in Maine, and some strange things start to happen. And Jared finds a field guide to the fantastical world, which when he looks through, appears to be about fairies. Okay. And he thinks maybe that has something to do with what's going on in the house. With all the strange goings on. Oh, and then it gets all eerie and weird, and you can't say any more. <laughs> <laughs> the books, you have to read the books. That's right. Okay, cool. Right, but Tone? Yes. You did all the illustration. I did do all the drawings. But you brought right. some pictures for us to have a look at, yeah? Yep, yep. Let's go through them and see what's going on. Here's the first one. Okay. So this is actually a piece from the actual field guide. This is a common ground goblin, and those sharp pointy things at the top are items he's extracted from its mouth that are uh, teeth, that, that's what the goblins use for teeth. I saw a shard of glass there. Shard of glass, a pen nib, some wooden sharpened sticks, yeah. Nice yeah. teeth! So has he got a local dentist that he goes to? <laughs> <laughs> he gets them put in. Yeah, I hope nice. he's got a good plan. <laughs> right, I think we've got another picture here coming up. Okay. Uh, this is actually from the new book, just came out, book four. Okay. That's uh, where they're lost in the dwarven mines and they meet a knocker. Right, Holly? Yes, that's a knocker. A they're knocker. listening to the wall. Holly, are uh, that, which characters are those? Jared is in the red. Okay. Simon is in green, and Mallory's in that dress, which is most uncharacteristic for Mallory. Yes. Ah, any significance there with the red top? Uh, red is protective. It is one of the ways that you can protect yourself from fairies, although in Jared's case, it is not enough protection. <laughs> she wins. He needs some serious, serious protection. Yeah. Much more protection. Okay, we've got one more picture to look at, I think. Okay, do. Let's have a little look. Uh, this is from the second book. Uh, again, Jared's wearing his red sweatshirt. And here they are. They've just gotten the sight, which actually allows them to see into the fairy world. And no sooner do they get it, and they realize they're being um, attacked by the goblins that we just saw in the field guide. Those are the little goblins Those little bat-eared things are this goblins. Much more characteristic. Uh, Dude, let me, let me just tell you, right? You can draw. I've read the book, and you can write. People, you need to read this book. It's a good book. You could win one, though, if you stick around. We'll be giving you a chance to do that in a little bit. See you in some while. <laughs> oh, the Spiderwick Chronicles. You could have a chance of winning these books later on. But right now, Tone, what's, what's on now? Coming up next, All Grown Up. Yay! It's competition time yet again, the third competition of the day. And we have ten sets of the Spiderwick Chronicles to give away, courtesy of Simon and Schuster, your friends there. <laughs> if you want to win it, all you've got to do is answer this very simple question. What do you use to write a book? A pen, a helicopter, Wellington boots. Ooh. If you think you know the answer, then you need to call on one of these numbers, 0901111200 or 1550 Calls cost you 25 pence or 55 cents. Don't forget to get permission before you dial. Lines are closing at 6.15. Right, we've had some emails coming in. All right. Okay. okay. Got one here from Barnaby Murphy. He says, how long does it take to write one of the Spiderwick books? Okay, well, um, the actual writing probably takes about two to three months. Okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, I sit down with Tony. And we talk about what we want to put in the books. We have the basic story that we got from Jared, Simon, and Mallory. But then we have to figure out, okay, what part of that story goes in each book. 
Yeah. No, I was going to say, no, so you bring, you bring Tony in from the start then. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's not a case where you write the story and then say, oh, can you illustrate some yeah. of that? No, no, no. I mean, yeah. we're good yeah. friends, so we kind of collaborate from the beginning. And I'll do sketches and we'll show them to her. She'll send them back and goes back and forth. To kind of mm, make the best nice. Yeah. So a, a little uh -huh. gathering of two people to make it all happen. Two yeah. months. Uh -huh. How long does it take from start to finish quickly? Got about five seconds. Uh, uh, yeah. One book. How long does it take you? We'll uh, tell you in a little 